Hey guys, Garrett with Executive Training Group. Um, guys, so before we get into the video in this review that I'm gonna do, uh, where I talk about things and stuff, um, can you go ahead for me and just go down into the comment section, leave a comment if you'd like, um, like if you'd like, like the video if you'd like, and then um, what really, really helps is actually the bell. We've got a whole bunch of juicy content in here, but you guys aren't being warned when it's coming out. Um, if you want to be warned when it's coming out, uh, so you can make fun of us, so you can give it a thumbs down, so you can comment, like, and subscribe, and whatever, all that stuff, please, uh, that really helps with the analytics of the channel and growing and, and all of that and, and helps us keep doing cool stuff like this. Um, so, you know, that's the typical YouTuber, uh, social media, lots of energy and smiles thing. What we are talking about today is actually a product, a little cylindrical product. Um, it's actually the JK Armament solvent trap. Um, and what we mean by that is it started its journey as a solvent trap and now here it sits in my hand as a fully functional suppressor. How did that happen, you might ask? Well, these guys are making solvent traps that also come with drill bits and if you so wish to do a Form 1 online and turn it into a suppressor, they make it pretty easy for you to do that. So guys, there's a couple things that we're gonna get into. The first one is actually going to be filing your form and basically the pros and cons of going for manufacturing espresso versus like this cool Surefire 300 SPS, which was the first suppressor I had, but I waited way too freaking long for. Um, what are the pros and cons, right? Um, so that Surefire I waited, I wanna say 11 months for, um, and then this guy was all in all about two months. And there's a reason it took two months the actual wait time for like paperwork filed to when I could start putting holes in this thing was about a month. Um, at the time that I purchased it, our friend uh, Mr. Millspec Mojo had made a post about it. It's the reason that I got one was I saw it and I went, ooh, that's cool. When he made that post, it slightly probably boosted the numbers of people ordering these things and they were there was a slight back order. Now, that being said, they did a really good job. The back order was only like a week or two. It was not horrible, or maybe a month at the most. Um, so uh, they did a really good job of getting those things out there and keeping up you know, supply and demand as it, it blew up a little bit. And now it seems that they're even getting bigger and bigger and more popular. Um, so talking about going and manufacturing your own versus uh, doing that. Traditionally, the wait times are gonna be way longer on the Form 4s. Uh, you're gonna have to go into a shop, do all this stuff. Um, this, it's all done at home, man. You can get your fingerprints, you can fingerprint yourself, send in a picture of yourself, do all of it, cover letter, all that. Um, super simple, but I would recommend if you have somebody like I did, shout out to Gunfarter George, um, who knew this stuff really, really well. He sat down and he helped and made sure that what I was submitting to the ATF was gonna be good to go um, and would get passed through on the first time. Um, so that's very valuable if you have a friend that could do that, um, have them do that when you're doing your Form 1. Uh, basically, uh, they, they send it out with the, you can purchase the drill bit and the jig, super easy. And this guy cost me about 800 some dollars um and well worth it so wait time that's what it came down to long story short it came down to the wait time i know i'm babbling but it came down to the wait time i didn't want to wait another 11 months for a suppressor now at the time i'm making this video the atf um 
in all their wisdom and glory, has said that they are going to do e-forms now for the Form 4s, which should shorten the time down. But if you're like me, anytime the federal government says something, I'm a little suspicious of it, um, and I'll believe it when I see it. I think eventually it will get to that point, but let's just say that it's gonna take a little bit. There's probably gonna be a couple times where it glitches and goes down and da 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 I hope that's not the case, um, but I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, so that's all you need to know about the, pa the paperwork, guys. Uh, it's not that hard. Get somebody who knows how to do it. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about Manufacturing, making this thing. Um, once you get your paperwork back and the all-knowing, wonderful ATF tells you you're good to go, um, you now can drill holes in metal. They're telling you that's okay now. So what you can do is you get their little jig that screws in here and you drill all your little holes. The biggest thing to do and to make sure you do, which I did not do, um, and I should know this because I've, I've done things like this before, when you're drilling into the metal, do not put tons of pressure and no cutting oil and just grind your drill bit away. Um, you will dull it out. It's titanium, it's a little bit more resilient than your aluminums. So make sure you have a good cutting oil in there. Uh, make sure you try and keep the, the drill bit relatively cool and don't apply a ton of pressure to just grind your drill bit down until it's basically a dull nub. So anyway, I you know, overcame and adapted and got through and, and was able to drill. But that's the biggest thing I'll say about manufacturing. Um, the other thing that is really, really crucial to while you're manufacturing this and once you go to mount the suppressor, depending on your mount, um, and I actually posted about this on Instagram and JK got right back to me and they told me, yeah, this is totally recommended. Anises. Putting a little bit of anises, uh, like spark plug anises, you know, high temperature anises, on each one of your threads will ensure that they do not seize up, but that they also stay in place. Okay, it's kind of a, it's almost like a rubbery feeling that you get from the threads where it just, it helps dampen vibration, I'd imagine, a bunch of scientific things that they discovered in Wakanda, I don't know. Um, but it's very helpful. Um, it basically makes sure that your baffles will stay in place, but you can also, they don't seize up, so you can also take them out and clean them, which is what we'll get into. Um, so yeah, as far as manufacturing, that's about it, guys. Just pick out a muzzle device that you wanna run on your rifles. For me, it was the Silencer Co. little three-prong, because I like the way three-prongs look. I've been a fan of the Surefire three-prong, so I kinda went with a little bit of a, um, as close as I could find to that for a good price, too. They're like 70 bucks on Silencer Co.'s website, so you can't complain about it. Um, and then you just get your little mount, whatever you want to mount this with. There's a bunch of different options, pretty much whatever you want to do. Um, okay, so let's get into the pros and the cons of the suppressor in areas where, um, in my opinion, one of the best, most well-proven suppressors out there uh, is the Surefire. I will admit I have not spent a ton of time testing random suppressors all over the place, but um, based on my experiences and the experiences of people that I trust, um, I'm gonna kind of compare this to a Surefire. Um, so to me, suppressors, you have to figure out what it's all about. For me, suppressors are about signature reduction. I don't necessarily care solely about sound or you know being silent. Um, it's a signature reduction tool. Uh, it basically works that when I'm shooting these 10.5s and these shorter rifles, if I'm you know out shooting and I don't have ear pro on, I mean, always shoot with ear pro, but it just makes this thing much more tolerable uh, because it's not like a really, really loud explosion going off. Um, obviously, you should always shoot with ear pro, but that's kind of more what I'm worried about is the, the disguising of a gunshot, just basically going, that doesn't sound like a small explosion. Um, 10 fives are really, really loud when you're shooting them unsuppressed. And, you know, if you go to an indoor range, same thing. Um, if you're in confined spaces and you're shooting, you know, uh, all that stuff, there's a reason going to shoot house having a muzzle break sucks and guys usually run flash pressers or cans. So signature reduction, all right? There's a couple things that we can measure that. Obviously the first one that we wanna talk about as everyone thinks about is the actual reduction of noise and kind of the disguise of a gunshot, right? Um, we don't have a naked gunshot anymore. We've kind of dressed it up and it's not nearly as like off-putting. Um, this does a really, really good job of it. Even in this short configuration that I'm running right here, I went out the other day and I shot it on my 10.5, nice and short like this with only two baffles. Uh, and then I took, you know, with no ear pro on, I was like, okay, that's probably damaging, but it's not horrible. It's kind of like the equivalent of a, a short 22 that you're shooting out of there. Um, and then I took this off just to remember, cause I, I haven't shot unsuppressed without ear pro in a really long time, uh, especially out of a short gun like this. And yeah, it, it does a lot. It does a lot, a lot. Um, so it's going to get an A plus on that. Just the noise reduction and the more baffles you add to it, the better it's going to do. 
um, at actually disguising and reducing it. Um, one thing that kind of bounces back to the manufacturing side of things that I did not mess with is something that's called clipping it. So I, this is kind of new to me, but there's a way to clip it once or clip it twice. And basically what that means is, yes, you drill a hole through the center, but then you also do like a relief cut um, on each side so that some of the gases, I guess, port better into the other baffles and you make better use of the further baffles down. I, I'm not 100% sure how it works. So what I don't know about that is I know that that helps with noise reduction. I don't know if that helps with the flash reduction, which is the next thing we're gonna talk about. So with that in mind, keep in mind that I just did a straight hole straight through the center of this. I didn't clip it, okay? So um, this could be improved. This one little kind of con that I have from this can is muzzle flash. The best thing about the Surefire can is it does a really good job of killing all muzzle flash, which is one of the very, very important reasons in signature reduction. Uh, every five shots, I'll have a little bit of a, a spark that comes out of the end of it, okay? And I do not notice it nearly as much once I put it on a longer. On my 14.5, it doesn't happen nearly as much, especially with more baffles. But on these short guns, I'm getting a little bit of spark every once in a while. It's not the end of the world, but it's kind of a trade-off. One of the other really big pros that I'm gonna talk about with this, and we'll get right into it, is the ability to take it apart and clean it. That is not something that you can do with a Surefire. You have to send it into them and yeah, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. Um, they're supposed to be self-cleaning, but long story short, they're not. After a while, they will get shot out and you'll have to send them in. I think Surefire takes care of you, but that does mean going without a suppressor for a while. You know, that's just food for thought, guys. This one can be taken apart, it's modular. You can put different end caps on it, all sorts of stuff like that I think is valuable. If you get a baffle strike, you replace the baffle. You know, I have to be honest where I can be honest that the muzzle flash leaves a little bit to be desired. If I could eliminate that by clipping it, I would consider going and clipping it. That's really the, you know, nitty gritty. Uh, also a little bit of um, anises on the threads here. Uh, I was having some issues with when the can was hot, um, it would loosen up a little bit on me. And then when the can would cool off, like I would leave, come back to the range, it would be seized up. Um, and that problem so far has been solved for me with just throwing a little bit of anesthesia on there and then no more, it's not a problem anymore. So yeah, those are just a couple tips. Um, other than that guys, just you know, check out their website. Uh, they are running a little bit of a sale right now for, for New Year's, so if you're watching this right away, now's your chance. In summary, with all of what I've just said, um, it's really up to you guys. Uh, if the ATF gets a little bit better at processing and doing their job, and then they tell us it's okay to have these um, devices that go on the end of our gun and make them a little bit quieter and whatever, if they get better at doing that job and you can purchase you know, actual Surefires, Dead Airs, Silencer Co's, all that stuff, um, that may be the route you wanna go. But it is also very nice to be able to have one that comes apart, cleans it, you manufacture it yourself. It's not difficult to manufacture yourself and you'll get it back in about a month as long as you don't jack up the paperwork. Um, I will never get rid of this. This is just, it's a solid suppressor, it works. Um, it, it's kind of cool, you create your own serial number and all that stuff for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out our website for upcoming classes and information. We also have uh, online training that you can get, uh, kind of subscribe to, it's basically our Patreon, uh, where it's very, very in-depth videos on how-tos. Basically, it breaks down into lessons, drills, and standards, so that if you're looking to push your training, and you can't really get to a class near you uh, of any instructor, save a little bit of that money for ammunition. That's a good option for you guys to have some um, guidance while you're going to your range days. So thanks so much, guys. Take care. Have a good one.